Okay, so I got this piece off of Facebook Marketplace, and after I'd bought it, she left it outside, and it rained, apparently, and now it has all this damage, but that's okay. I can sand it down, and I have a piece of wood if I need to replace the top, um, but I'm going to end up painting and decoupaging on top anyway, so hopefully it won't matter. I lost the others a little spot down here where their dog chewed on the leg. Uh, it's a cute little two-shelf unit, and I mean, not real wood, obviously, but it'll do. Uh, we'll make it pretty. And then I should be able to put it in my baby stick. Okay. So as always, we want to start with washing the piece really well. And I've got um, some TSP alternative from Fusion along with some water here. Just giving it a good cleaning all the way around. And then we'll begin to sand some of those spots on the top there. Just using 80 grit sandpaper to start off with just to take those raised areas down and then I'll go over again with the 220 just smooth that all out. And then I just kind of scuffed it, sanded the rest of the piece with the 220. And it's time to remove the hardware and the doors. And then because of that area being MDF and me having to sand it down, I'm going to go ahead and just shellac the whole piece with two coats. That'll kind of even out those areas and also prevent any bleed through when I go to paint. So I brought it inside my studio and I'm going to be using Fusion's mineral paint. It's called Eucalyptus. It's a, a light sage green color. And it's the all-in-one paint, so it has the paint primer and top coats, so I don't have to worry about sealing this after I'm done. That's what's so nice about this paint. And you can buy any of the paint line products from Fusion on my website at thereclaimedrants.com. So for the inside, I thought I'd go pretty bold. Um, the decoupage paper that I'm going to be putting on the doors has some of this bright blue color in it, and this is... DIYs um, iris and I just thought it'd be kind of a fun piece to go outside my normal neutral colors. So I painted the doors and I didn't worry about taping the windows because this is like super easy. You just take a blade and just go along the windows and scrape all the paint off takes way less time that way to do that than to have to tape all those areas. And I'm going to go ahead and just wash them again before I do decoupage paper. So this is that paper that I was telling you about that has those great little flowers on it. And I'm just going to measure it out, increase it where I need to cut. And I'll do that twice since there's two doors. And then there will be a little bit left over, and I'm going to use those pieces on the top. So I'm going to go ahead and use DIY's liquid patina. For my decoupage medium, I also have my mister, and I'm spraying the paper and kind of getting it a little bit damp, and that's going to help it seal through the window. And then I use um, saran wrap to help with the bubbles, also my brayer. And that I just kind of lightly go over each of those sections, kind of taking out those wrinkles and bubbles as much as I can. And then just do smaller sections so that it's easier to work with. These decoupage papers are pretty resilient. Um, you can see me kind of lifting up a couple times 
because there's a couple big wrinkles in there. So I just lift it up and then re reapply with the brayer or, or saran wrap to help get those bubbles out. And then once I'm done with this part of it, I will go ahead and seal the backside of that decoupage paper up with the liquid patina as well. And that will seal everything in. And then I'll let it dry completely. See how pretty that looks already. Sorry about the ring light, but uh, you can kind of see the, the image through there. So this is me taking that liquid patina again and sealing up the backside. And then I let that dry for about an hour. You can see there's just a little lick there. I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and just run it along the glass and remove the excess paper from that. So here's those extra pieces left over. What I like to do is I don't like to have sharp lines on my decoupage paper. Um, so I just take some water in a, in a small artist brush and wet it down. And then I tear the edges just to kind of give it more of a easier way to blend into the paints that I'm going to be using. Okay, so apparently I forgot to push record when I was doing the decoupage, but it's the same as I did with the window. I just lay a thin layer of the liquid patina down and work in small sections. As I place the paper, I use my saran wrap and my brayer to help roll out the wrinkles. And here I'm using the uh, Fusion Eucalyptus paint with a makeup sponge and a brush, and I'm kind of just blending those areas of the paper that you can kind of see mm -hmm. into the top of the shelf to make it less noticeable. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use uh, Big Top and seal that hole piece with Big Top before I use any of the glazes and waxes. Same with the inside. I'm going to go ahead and seal again with the Big Top. The reason I sealed the top of this is because of the decoupage paper, not because of the paint, because the fusion paint has its own top coat in it. But the inside needs to be sealed because it was the DIY paint, which is a clay-based paint. Um, so we're going to do a fun decoration on top. I'm going to use uh, the Iron Orchid Designs trimming with mold too. And I'm going to use the um, amazing casting resin uh, to make a mold to go just border the top of it on the back side. And I do have another video that goes over all these steps. Um, 
but basically there's a part A, part B. You just use equal parts and mix them together, pour it in your mold and let it sit for 10 minutes and then you can take them out. So you get to here, had it in the mold and then they just pop out and they're continuous uh, mold so you can connect them. It's kind of nice. And then I will paint those in the same color as the shelf unit, the Fusion Eucalyptus. And then to glue them onto the shelf, we're going to use the tight bond, quick and thick, multi-surface glue again. So we're going to just put a generous amount on the backside, and then I always use my finger uh, to rub it all the way out to the edges. And then I'm going to push it down, and I like to have some of it kind of seep out. That way I know that the glue has gotten all the way from side to side. And then I use a baby wipe just to kind of clean up any excess that has squeezed out. So now we're going to use DIY's Dark and Decrepit Liquid Pina, and we're going to make those molds stand out a little bit more. So I'm going to use a little chippy brush and just kind of pounce into those areas all along the mold and kind of swirl to make sure that the paint or that DIY Decrepit gets all the way down to the bottom of the mold because then I want to take a shop towel and wipe away the the top part just to highlight it and make it really pop. You can see there, kind of gives it that old world feel. Makes it stand out a little bit more. I love this stuff. It's so much fun to make things look antique and old. So I did it all along the top, and now I'm going to take some DIY dark wax and use it around the whole top area. Actually, I used it around the whole entire shelf unit. I just kept going because <laughs> I liked it so much, but I wanted to kind of blend in those flowers a little bit more. And here she is all finished. I think it's just absolutely gorgeous with that paper on the inside showing through and a couple on the top. And I'm going to put it in my booth and hopefully it'll sell right away. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. That bold color jumping out at you. What you would do different. I know a lot of people don't like the distressed look so they can always leave that step out and have a more fresh clean look. But I just like this little piece. It's fun. And this next piece here, 
got a little story for you. So there was a new thrift store opening up and I got there early. Of course, there was a line and I heard a lot of people talking that they were resellers looking for furniture. So I knew it was going to be kind of like a Black Friday at Walmart. And so the minute the doors opened, we all just beelined it for the furniture. Before I even knew what this piece was, I slapped my hand on it so that I could kind of claim it as my own and found out that it was a complete all wood piece, 10 drawer dresser for $45. Can you believe that? So of course brought it home. And uh, first thing we're going to do is just wash it all down really good. And then I like to number the drawers uh, so I know where, where they go again without having to fuss about it later. And then I'm going to start the sanding process after I clean out the inside. A lot of times these dressers, these old dressers, have a lot of dust and grime and dirt. My daughter asked if she could come on and say hi to everybody. So that's Ellie. She's, she's a great little helper. She loves to help work on these big projects. So we're going to use the 80 grit sandpaper first just to kind of cut down the sand or the, the stain off there. And there was a lot of scratches that you saw on the top. So I had to get those out. And then I'm going to use the 220 grit to go back over and just make everything nice and smooth and kind of scuff sand the rest. I did end up sanding the very bottom all the way down to the wood. However, when I went back after a while after looking at it, I ended up painting because it just wasn't looking we're going to get all that sand off or sawdust and then we're going to go in with our fusion mineral paint in cold black and i'm going to use a diy synthetic brush that way there's going to be hardly any brush strokes at all especially with this fusion paint it's so nice it levels out nicely So my plan is to keep the top and all the drawers natural and have a black background for everything, make it kind of pop. I did kind of run into a problem with the drawers. They have that old bat leaf style hardware and it was really difficult. I couldn't find anything locally to kind of go over that and hide it because it was like a a bleach stain so I ended up just using the hardware that was on there but I painted it black so this here is my own antiquing mix I have Waverly antiquing wax along with water and a little bit of black acrylic paint just to kind of give it a little bit more of a an older finish look um, I do like a little bit of color to my wood um, it looks really orange in this video, but actually it turned out really nice. It's got a really nice light brown tone in real life. So I don't know if it's just because we're outside or, but when it dries down, it dries a lot less orange. And then I went in with the DIY clear wax. We're going to use that because it's a natural top. I don't want it to, like the polyurethane or the polyacrylics, they'll usually leave brush strokes. Um, and so with this wax, it's going to give it a nice durable seal, but have no strokes and be super smooth after you buff it out. So that's why I love using wax on furniture instead of the polyacrylic to seal on. And again, the fusion paint is already sealed because it has its own top coat. So I just have to do the wood. But you can see on the drawers here, you can see that um, the the lighter color where the hardware used to be. I mean, I probably could have bleached out the drawers and got that off of there. But 
I was kind of in a hurry and wanted to get something in my room because I just sold a piece and had a big spot that was empty. So it all worked out in the end. So I'm going back over now. It's been about 20 minutes since I put that on there. And then I'm just taking a rag, a lint-free rag, and buffing out that wax. And here's the final product. She turned out beautiful. Had a lot of compliments with the employees at my booth. I just love this piece. I think we got it at a yard sale. I can't remember how much it was. But um, last weekend I had taken a class at Debbie's on um, Elsie Lane Boutique where I get all my DIY products. And she showed us how to decoupage and blend paint. I immediately saw this piece and was like, that's what I'm going to do. So first thing I'm going to do is use my TSP with water and clean it up really nice. Yeah, it's got a really like a light yellowy color finish to it. Um, it's flaking off and doesn't look all that great, but it's again, solid wood. So I was able to sand most of that off on the top there. And I sanded down the drawers just enough to have the paint adhere to it. So So I'm going to start off with the 80 grit again on my old little sander just to get that finish off. And then we'll go down to the 220 to make it nice and smooth. This has to be my favorite project for today's video because it just has my heart. You'll see why. I end up using a really cool decoupage piece. And blending for the first time, I actually thought I did pretty good. So this paint is bare. Um, it was actually at Home Depot on the Oops shelf. It's like a kind of a creamy tan color. And when I saw that, I picked it up because it was only $9 for a full gallon. And this paint is actually like a $45 gallon paint. So I was like, that, that's a score. So I'm going to use that kind of as my base coat and see, oh my gosh, this has my heart, this long horn here is just amazing once I take it out. I'm having a hard time letting this one go. So I'm trying to figure out, okay, do I want it more up top, down below? In the center, I knew I wanted him to come out kind of from the side. So I wanted to butt him up to the side, but I'm sure to figure it out. Then I'm going to go ahead and put my base coat on. My dogs were going crazy. They were trying to figure out what I was doing in the kitchen. <laughs> Let's go sleep on. The bigger one's Rocky. So now you can kind of see against that lighter base how pretty that is.
And I'm going to use the liquid patina again for my decoupage. This decoupage paper is from Mint by Michelle. It's a very durable, like you'll see me like lift up a few times and redo it. It's a lot harder to, to rip than say like a normal decoupage paper, tissue paper. It's just, they're really, really nice to work with. And again, Debbie from LC Lane Boutique. This is where I usually get all my decoupage papers is from her. So if you want to see what she has in her store or just go to her website it's lclane.com i didn't mind too much about too many wrinkles because this is obviously a very rustic piece anyways Now comes the creative part. So I've got Apple Barrel Black Acrylic Paint, Waverly Chalk Paint in Hazelnut, Waverly Chalk Paint in Crimson, Truffle, and then my, my base coat. So I also ended up getting some of the DIY uh, Dark and Decrepit because the brown of the truffle was more of a I don't know, kind of ended up purple. And then I just used a plastic mat to put all of them on and a little chippy brush for blending. And then also you can have a mister or spray sprayer um, just to, you know, some of that paint is going to dry faster. So it keeps the paint flowing a lot better. But I just kind of went with the flow and didn't really have rhyme or reason on what colors went where. I think I use the multi-purpose DIY brush here, but it really softens the edges. This is a really nice brush to be able to blend with.
Okay. okay. So after painting both the front and both sides, I took that dark and decrepit and went ahead and stained the top of there. Okay, so it's the next day, and I'm going to go ahead and take my X-Acto knife. I put a brand new blade in for this. And then we're just going to cut the areas where those drawers are. Cut, like, in the middle as much as I can, because we're going to have to use that liquid patina and kind of decoupage those pieces back over the drawer tops and bottoms. So you want to have some leftover on both top and bottom. And I just used a little artist brush to get in there. So this is the Wise Owl Salve and Lemon Verbena. Oh my gosh, this smells so delicious. I can't even, like I want to put it on everything. This product's great for uh, if there's like an old musty smell in your drawers. Like I put it on the inside of drawers as well because this one was kind of stinky. So uh, another product that I bought from Debbie at Elsie Lane Boutique this wise owl she sells all wise owl products as well but definitely it just gives that wood a drink um freshens up the smell the odors it just gives it some more color you can see i also painted on the tops of the drawers because when you close the drawer you could see like the the wood tone so i kind of just mimicked what i blended on the outside of the front of the the cow there or the steer and just kind of painted so that it looks like it's all cohesive. And then I'm going to let that sit on there for about an hour and come back with a rag or the three rag and just wipe all the excess back. And then it'll be all done. This is my absolute favorite project for this week. Loved how this turned out. Um, these knobs, <laughs> I had four in my stash. And so I just need, actually had six. I think in my stash and I just need to go get a couple more. Well, I went to Lowe's and they had the same. Got lucky on that. Yeah, again, tell me you guys what you think about this project. Um, what you would have done different, if anything. Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Appreciate all your support. And I'll have to figure out what we're going to do for the next video. Talk to you soon. Bye.